Hello everybody, this is History in Faces, Mao Zedong Cycle, 5th episode. The Great Leap Over resulted in enormous damage to the economy, the terrible condition of agriculture. It turned out that the budget deficit was about 300 million yuan. The Great Helmsman position weakened at the party. He took a back seat. Moreover, he even had to admit some of his mistakes. After that company, there was an active recovery of the country's economy under the leadership of Deng Xiaoping and Liu Shaozi. Note, before the Cultural Revolution, Liu was the second person in the party. Moreover, since 1959, he replaced Mao as the chairman of the PRC. And methods that they were using were very different from what Mao originally proposed. There was a rollback on all fronts. By the summer of 1962, from 20 to 30 percent of the land was passed into the hands of peasants. The situation was slowly but improving. After all, Deng Xiaoping even said, it doesn't matter if a cat is black or white so long as it catches mice. Of course, Mao was outraged by such an approach. Where the revolutionary spirit, what kind of bourgeois methods, why China followed the capitalist path? As soon as he felt that he was losing ground under his feet, he began to act lightning fast. He wasn't going to give his power to anyone. Quote, if I have an opponent, I will leave to head peasants and throw off the government. I will go to mountains and start a guerrilla war. Soon, in order to regain his former influence and strength, Mao decided to start a new mass company, aimed primarily at cleaning the state apparatus. They were not aware of warning signs of trouble in the beginning. Party functionaries who fell under Mao's disfavor would have to repent of their sins and mistakes. Then they simply were removed from the political arena. Someone was under house arrest and someone was sent to villages for works. It is worth noting that at the time Chinese peasants didn't have an opportunity to change not only their residence, but also their profession. That is in fact meant an exile for party leaders and their families. But soon the war against Seoul has begun. Intelligentsia teachers clergy came under fire. Where could he place his bed? The former god, those people with whom he went hand in hand since the founding of the party, from the time of the civil war, the war with Japan, move away from revolutionary ideas. Many believed that the country needs smooth and gradual growth. They became revisionists from his point of view. He decided to bet on youth, yet yeah, they made a great achievement to China. They miss the long march, they miss the war with Chiang Kai-shek, but they still can make a revolution, a leader, a living god whom they can follow is here. This time it is necessary to purify the country and nation from the romance of the past, to raise the whole nation to a new class struggle, to sweep away all revisionists, accomplices of imperialism. Maya called for the destruction of the four olds, old ideas, old culture, old customs and old habits that is in fact destroying everything that was created in China over thousands of years. Mao said that too much studies filling heads of youth oppressed their revolutionary spirit. This had unnecessary information. As a result, the number of hours at schools were reduced first. Later, a reform of language was carried out, simplifying the hieroglyphs. And at the end, classes in universities and schools were cancelled. Destroyed youth rushed to Beijing, where from late August to late November in 1966, more than eight parades were held in which more than 11 million people took part, shiny quotes of the Great Helpsman from the Little Red Book. Mao was rejoicing. The first to fall upon this youth were Liu and Deng, thousands of so-called Hanwei Bins or Red Guards, which mainly included students and school children, chanted, down with Liu Shaozi, down with Deng Xiaoping, let's bring the bloody battle with Liu and Deng to the end. In 1969, Liu Shaozi died in prison, Deng was more fortunate. He was only sent to a tractor factory to the province. Having tasted complete freedom and impunity, the Hanwei Bins only got more exciting. Having received unlimited freedom from above, they were able to burst into any house, factory, school, university, under any pretext, and start smashing everything they wanted, be it antiques, paintings, records, books were burned. People who were suspected in betrayal were sighted and taken out in the streets, where an angry crowd could torture the traitor of the homeland to death or if he was lucky enough, mock him and let go. Monuments of architecture, archives were destroyed, the entire historical heritage. In 1966, Red Guards visited 30,000 houses only in Beijing and killed more than 1,500 people whom they suspected in revisionism. Chaos has begun in the country. Over time, riots and unrest swept almost all of China. 
factories and the brothers transport, everything has stopped. The country plunged into the mass. The economic collapse has begun. During the activity on Hubei Bins and Zhao Fan, or so-called rebels, for reference these were participants and workers organizations, whose average age was about 30 years old. More than a million people were tortured, killed, shot, and some of them committed suicide. Damage to the culture and historical heritage is simply impossible to calculate. Ultimately, it all came to the point that separate groups already begin to emerge within the same organization, which arrange clashes with each other. By 1967, the oppression was suppressed. Only the use was already impossible to stop. All over the country, marching groups of Hanwei Bins who sought out counter-revolutionaries and cracked down on them. In the end, even Ma realized the situation was getting out of control. He was simply afraid of the complete collapse of the country. The army was activated, which entered the cities. The active suppression of Hanwei Bins began. Excited youth were resisting, not ready to simply give up their power. China was on the verge of the civil war. All the former Hanwei Bins and Xiao Fangs were sent either to labor camps or to villages. When the movement was stopped, and party workers who had to restore the country's economy returned from an exile. Meanwhile, relations with USSR were not straightened, moreover, soon they deteriorated completely. The reason for this was the entry of Soviet troops into Czechoslovakia in August 1969. Later, the PRC authorities said that the USSR embarked on the path of the socialist imperialism. Furthermore, the doctrine adopted by the Soviet leadership which stated that the USSR has rights to intervene in the internal affairs of any social country if the socialism is threatened there. Ultimately, all this resulted in border conflict on Damansky Island. China's losses amounted to about 800 people killed. 58 people were killed on the Soviet side. Two countries were on the verge of the nuclear war. There was no longer any discussion of any cooperation, let alone friendship. The USSR became the worst enemy of China. Again, the background of all these events, Mao decided to start diplomatic relations with USA. It was necessary to change the balance of power in Asia and the entire world. After the betrayal of the Union, Mao Zedong decided to enlist the support of the United States. So in February 1972, US President Nixon paid a visit to the PRC. By the seventh year, the state of health of Mao was very weak. He quite often was ill and didn't go out in public. He often shivered. He had a heartache. In 1974, he lost his sight due to cataracts. In the same year, he was diagnosed with a rare disease, Lou Gehrig, because of which a person initially lost the ability to move, swallow, speak, and then to breathe. Nevertheless, the situation in the state apparatus didn't become calmer. People close to Mao later called the Gang of Four, ideologists of the Cultural Revolution, its main supporters, which also include Mao's last wife, Jiang King. They were trying to take all the power in the country into their own hands and remove the people of the old school led by Zhu Enlai and Deng Xiaoping. Being on his last legs, Mao Zedong was trying to prevent the dominance of one group over another. Although by 1976, he was already almost losing his ability to speak and move. And Jun, he had a heart attack. He became so ill that he was no longer able to eat by himself. In September, he had two more serious heart attacks. On September 9, 1976, at the 83rd year of life, Mao's heart stopped beating. Over a million people attended his funeral. His body was emblazoned and exhibited in a mausoleum in Tiananmen Square, where he is located to this day. The struggle after his death in the party apparatus only intensified. But this is a completely different story. Thanks for watching. I hope that you liked this episode. Stay tuned, subscribe, leave likes, comments. And see you later. Bye.